Hey YouTube, welcome back to Clutch Situation. Today I have a trifecta of things to share with you today. This isn't going to be a mechanical pencil review, but it is going to feature a vintage mechanical pencil, which you can see here on the right. I want to talk a little bit about U.S. government writing utensils, which sort of are an interesting historical curiosity of the United States. But basically, overall, what I have for you today is I have a pencil, a pad, and a pen. And so... Alliteration aside, I have three P's for you today, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with the pad so that we have an opportunity to do some writing within the pad with the various writing utensils that I'm going to show you today. And so <clears throat> I was in Blick Art Stores uh, yesterday. My wife was at Natural Grocers doing some shopping, and she usually spends uh, quite a bit of time in there, and so there's a Blick Art Store right nearby in Omaha, and so periodically I stop into Blick Art Stores just to see what they have. They usually don't have much in the way of mechanical pencils. It's usually just what you would expect, Alvin Draftmatics, Alvin Draft Tech Retracts, and uh, Pentel P200 series pencils, which is fine and which is great. That's awesome. We love those pencils. But uh, in terms of new products, it isn't a place that you would tend to go to to uh, look for new models of mechanical pencils. But what I did notice while I was looking around is that I'm always on the lookout for notebooks in styles and in qualities that I really like. And being the scientist that I am, I like to write on graph paper. And so, for example, I have my Rhodia Ice notebook right here that I got while I was in Kansas City last year, and I'm about halfway through that one. But I noticed this Fabriano brand pad, and so I looked over, they had a wide selection at my Blick Art Store, you know, obviously this is going to vary based upon what exists in your area, but I noticed that they had a variety of them in graph paper, okay, they call this a five millimeter grid, essentially, and I decided to go with the smaller version of this because I tend to like to make lists using these pads. And I find that if I have like a larger size paper, like eight and a half by 11, then I just write a single item on a line. And I find that uh, it's less important for me to have horizontal space on the page than it is for me to have vertical space. And so I tend to go towards this overall size of notebook is as something that is appropriate for me and my likes and dislikes. And so uh, the paper on this Fabriana notebook seems to be pretty good quality. If you turn to the back of the notebook, you'll notice that they have this ecological uh, paper description. It says Ecoqua is made of ecological paper. Uh, it's 85 gram weight showing a pale ivory shade produced with 100% TCF totally chlorine free and FSC certified cellulose pulp issued from forest managed according to strict environmental standards. So definitely appreciate the uh, forest management there uh, because, you know, we need paper as part of our culture and uh, I'd, I'd prefer my paper to be coming from a source that is uh, sustainably produced. And what I find interesting about this, and I don't know if this is different in the EU compared to the United States, but according to this, a big determinant of its environmental friendliness, according to this manufacturer, is 100% TCF, or totally chlorine-free. Which, you know, I can see how excess chlorine dumped into an area could put acidic uh, stress on the water supply in a particular area. And so um, I, I just find it interesting that um, totally chlorine-free is not something that is usually advertised here in the United States. And so maybe that's a bigger deal in the EU. I don't know. In Italy, where this is produced. And so you can see that I paid six bucks for this at Blick Art Supply. MSRP, $6.10. Oh my gosh, I saved 15 cents. And uh, made in Italy. And there's you know various... Uh, this is a 70-page notebook. And so um, I personally prefer to go up a level on my notebooks. I don't just buy what's available at a, at a uh, big box store, largely because it's very difficult to get this uh, graph paper, uh, high quality graph paper at a big box store. And so I tend to go to more specialty stores for that. And so there you go. There's the first P, pad. Okay, next P, pencil. Yes, this is a mechanical pencil blog, so we should probably get to the pencil before people run away and shut off the video, and you may have already done that. But uh, what we have here is a Skillcraft U.S. government pencil, 
Now, U.S. government pencils have an interesting history in that a variety of manufacturers have produced U.S. government pencils. Skillcraft is one of them. Other ones that I can think of just, just off the top of my head, early on, Scripto manufactured U.S. government pencils. And I believe also that uh, AutoPoint manufactured U.S. government pencils. And so U.S. government agencies would give these out to their workers to use. The post office used U.S. government pencils, which I think where a majority of people had their U.S. government pencils from. And then obviously uh, politicians had access to U.S. government pencils. And NASA had access to U.S. government pencils. Now that's just the very, very, very short list. There are dozens upon dozens of U.S. agencies. Agencies. And so I'm wondering with this particular two sided uh, skill craft, we have red on one end and standard lead on the other end, which AutoPoint is very famous for its twin point model, which this model from Skillcraft sort of mirrors the AutoPoint twin point model. I'm wondering what sort of US government. Uh, agency needed these two different colors of lead in their U.S. government pencils because I've seen a lot of U.S. government pencils with just the standard lead but I haven't seen any many in the twin point model. In fact, until this point, this is the first twin point that I had seen that had been marked with U.S. government. And so anybody in the audience who knows what sort of uh, U.S. government agencies might need to have access to both red and black um, Maybe this is engineers, maybe this is architecture, I'm not really sure, so it would be awesome if someone could uh, leave some more information for us in the comments so that we can continue to learn. And of course, whenever I get a vintage writing instrument like this, the first question that I always ask myself is, uh, does it work? And I was very pleased, I got this at an antique mall between Omaha and uh, Lincoln, uh, because I'm a member of a... Uh, state government panel in Lincoln uh, that I do, the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission. And uh, while I was uh, driving in between the two, I stopped at this antique store. And so I was very pleased to see that this is a uh, rotating, working pencil, which usually when you get these vintage pencils at an antique store or antique mall, it's hit or miss. So this is the Skillcraft U.S. government. Let's switch it up so that I can show you that the red also works. Oh, but as we all know, red lead is not as tough as other leads. So we just had a breakage right there. So it would be really interesting to, you know, find out what particular, what is the provenance of this particular pencil? Where did it come from? Which U.S. agency was the U.S. government that uh, this pencil was part of? Um, so if you have any ideas for that, leave that in the comments. And so there we go. There's our second P for this video, the pencil. And we're on to our third P, which is actually a fourth P. And that is because the manufacturer of this is Platinum. Okay, so we're getting four P's of alliteration in this video. I'm pretty excited about that. So over the last eight months or so, I've been looking for a grading pen that really speaks to me. Frequently, I can grade in pencil because I, have a, I will have a, a rubric and a separate part of that rubric that is designed for comments. And it doesn't really matter whether the, the writing is in pen or pencil, so long as the student can read it. Um, of course, if I'm needing to mark a page, we want our, our marks to stand out as compared to student marks. And so that's where I will frequently not only go to a pen, because many of my students are writing in pencil during class, but I will also tend to go to a color of ink that is not as readily seen. And so for the last eight months or so, I've been writing with a Platinum Plazier fountain pen. Okay, so this has been... Platinum Plazier. And I've really enjoyed it. I got this one, I want to say, from Jet Pens. Okay. And it's worked out really great over the last eight months. But you can see I've scratched it. Okay. Which, you know, I'm kind of kicking myself for that. It's, this is a cheaper 
fountain pen. I think it retails for around $13. And so since I had gained a lot of enjoyment out of using that platinum fountain pen, I decided it was time for an upgrade. And I went on to Fountain Pen Network. Some of you may have seen my posts there. I was looking for recommendations based upon what I like in a fountain pen. I tend to prefer fountain pens that are something that I want to look at. So uh, forest green is my favorite color. And so something that stands out to me that always uh, I look for when I'm shopping for a pen is a coloration scheme that matches one of my favorites. And I find this to be true with mechanical pencils as well. There just aren't that many forest green or emerald green pens or pencils out there. And so when I find something that fits the bill, that's something that I tend to go to. I've also found in researching nibs and what's available that I prefer a nib that gives a little bit of feedback in the writing process. I, I think what I've learned from spending some time on Fountain Pen Network, that there are a lot of fountain pen users that prefer a completely smooth writing instrument, meaning that when they press it to the paper and move it around, mm -hmm. there's no resistance whatsoever. It's like rubbing a hot stick of butter along a pan or something. I prefer a little bit more feedback in my writing experience with a fountain pen. And so as a result of that, I decided that platinum nibs kind of really speak to me. And what I have here is an upgrade to my platinum plazier. This is the platinum balance in green. So let's just go ahead and unbox it. Oh my gosh, look at how pretty it is. Yeah. And so it's got gold trim and it's probably not going to be easy to see on the video, but it also has a shimmer to it. Um, and I don't know how else to describe it. It's as if there is a like a, a faint amount, a classy amount of glitter, not an unclassy amount of glitter, a classy amount of glitter that is present within the fountain pen. And so not only do I prefer platinum nibs, but I've also found that I uh, like the switch, the ease of switchability and the ink that comes in platinum cartridges. I'm still deciding whether I'm going to go with cartridges or whether because this particular platinum model can accept a converter, whether I'm going to go to for a converter. And so if you can recommend to me a green fountain pen ink that is similar to the existing platinum ink that you would recommend as part of what would go into a ink converter, I'm all ears. So go ahead and post that in the co comments as well. If some of you are sort of dual enthusiasts, mechanical pencils and fountain pens, feel free to post that in the comments as well. So this is a, um, I don't know, would we call this a, f a friction? Yeah, it's a friction seal. Okay, or, or snap-on cap, I guess is what you would call it. And it has the words platinum on it. And it also posts on the other side pretty securely, so it's not going to come off. And the nib is a gold-plated steel nib. And I don't think it's plated with actual gold. It's just gold in color. They selected some metal that is gold in color. Uh, this pen retails at, I think I got it at uh, about $36 on jet pens. So it's an upgrade from my Platinum Plazier at $16 or so. Uh, but, you know, it's not like a crazy break the bank upgrade. And it definitely feels like a much more solid pen than the Platinum Plazier. So let's do a little writing with this one. And I'm also going to try to be silent here so you can sort of hear the scritchy scratch of it, which I really like in uh, finer nibbed fountain pens. I want to hear that scritchy scratch when I'm writing. That's part of the experience for me. You may not like that. Teach their own. But I really like that. I also like that, it, that, like that it gives a little feedback, but it's not digging into the paper. Uh, the ink is still flowing pretty smoothly. And so platinum nibs, I hear, tend to run finer than other fountain pens. Okay. 
I don't know. People do the S swirls with this. I'm not going to pretend to be a, a fountain pen aficionado or something, but I know that some of you like to see these things. Okay, so I don't regret it at all. I really like it. I'm going to be really excited to grade with this. And so if you're a student in the audience, you know, look for this. You can, I think you can see that the line is darker than the line that I had for the Platinum Plazier. I'm... These the platinum plazier is a is a point oh three nib. It's a fine nib, and this one is just called fine. But I don't know if there's still a difference in the uh, thickness of the line for the nibs. But it sort of seems like it's darker to me with the platinum balance. And so perhaps we're getting a little bit more ink flow out of this one. So this is a fine nib. I'm going to really enjoy writing with this. And so I wanted to share this with everybody. This is the third and fourth P of the video. We have a platinum balance fountain pen four P's in case you didn't get it, which I'm pretty sure you did. All right. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this P video for a pencil, a pad and a pen. And I definitely have some more mechanical pencil reviews coming up on the channel, so stay tuned for that. I'm still waiting to hear back from Stettler. I contacted them directly, at least their Canadian office, the North American office, to see if I can get some more information to make sure that when I review the 925 series, I'm reviewing it accurately. And then I also have that Faber-Castell TK, TK Fine Barrio L to review. And I do have a pencil planned if we can get to 4,000 subs. And so if you're just joining us, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm going to see if I can get to the 4,000 subscriber mark, and then I will have a special pencil to review for that. Some of you in the, on the channel are aware of this pencil, and it's a new one that has recently hit the market, and it's definitely worth celebrating and checking out for a 4,000 subs video. And so uh, hopefully we get there. Um, and so thanks for watching. Please post in the comments what you think about U.S. government pencils and where that twin point uh, style might have been used in a U.S. government agency. Let me know what you think about the Platinum Balance as a fountain pen and if you have any comments on the nib or, or what you prefer in fountain pens. And, you know, if you're in the EU especially, let us know if Fabriano's uh, Totally Chlorine Free is a common sight in uh, one of your countries, uh, especially Italy, because it seems like it might be a little different here in the United States. And so thanks for watching. Have a great day.